I was born in the United States. I was born in New York City on Riverside Drive. I'm a typical American New Yorker. I remember my uncle's best friend flung himself out of the window at a huge building down in Wall Street by the time I graduated, which was 1938. Depression was sort of petering out, and the spirit was beginning to change. Blue day, all them gone. Nothing but blue sky from now on. The World's Fair showed us that wonderful new ideas and new innovations come from all over the world. There were 40 or 50 million people that attended the World's Fair, and I was one of them. We were looking forward to see what the future might be. And that's what the whole buzz was about the World's Fair, about what they thought the future would be. We would drive in the car on a Saturday, park the car, and I used to run around to see all the license plates. We counted the plates. We're now up to 40. This was all something new, and it was the World's Fair that brought it to us. Well, you're into a big reception area, and there were places for food and drink, benches to sit down. You saw the, what they call it, the sphere and the, the ball and the, and the tower. The pylon and uh, stratosphere, I think it was called. I thought I was holding Dad's hand, and this person kept doing this to me. Turns out I picked up some man. I don't know who he was. I was holding his hand until Dad came and rescued me. It was a very exciting time. It gave us a different perspective. It gave people a new outlook on life. I think it's so awesome, just awesome, that you found that footage of me at the World's Fair in 1939. Good glory, Alan. I was so startled to see that. That was a Manchurian ermine coat, and it was cold. And of course, there were jillions of people there. But I'd stop and talk to all these sweet people and say, what did you get for souvenir?" there? I'd always ask everybody. And I'd be out in front like I was a tour guide or something, because all of these people were asking me questions. And I said, well, let's go see it together. One of the big exhibits at the World's Fair was the Aquacade. They all swam in unison. They were sort of like the rockets in water. I don't know if you've ever heard of Johnny Weissmuller. He became Tarzan. Oh, <laughs> don't put that in there. <laughs> I was at the British Pavilion the day that Queen Elizabeth and King George visited the fair. And uh, it was just before the war. It, it was such a, an outstanding thing for a 12-year-old. And the World's Fair opened up a whole new world. A lot of people went to the General Motors exhibit. Here is a highway intersection. Highway engineering at its most spectacular. We were blithely going and getting in little cars and riding over fake landscapes and, and not really paying attention. And the world was going up in flames. The World's Fair was put aside for the war, but after the war, I think that most of the things that people saw at the World's Fair were things that people were striving to get. The World's Fair opened up the world to Americans. The World's Fair told us 
We're not the only ones on this planet. And that, I think, is what the World's Fair did for us in 1939.